Fun game last night between the Pacers and the Heat. I think Perloff even stayed up late to watch it. Not Eight? exactly in your wheelhouse, Perloff. But no, I loved it. All about Richard Lewis. <laughs> Richard's still hanging on, man. He got one of those great contracts. It was it seven years, hundred plus million dollars back in the day? One of those contracts being doled out like like candy in a bowl. Let's bring in Quinn Buckner, Fox Sports Indiana. Quinn, what was the biggest contract you ever had? It wasn't a hundred million dollars. I guarantee you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, watching some of these guys, you know, he's actually done a. A fairly good job. He was good when he got it, and then uh, you know the nature of it is at some point he's undervalued, and at some point as you get older, you get old, uh, overvalued. That's that's the nature of, of signing long-term deals. Is Indiana a dirty team? No. Why was not it? A dirty, I mean, I understand. I keep hearing this this physical thing. I think they play aggressively. I think they play with great intent and passion. But I don't think it's anywhere near as dirty. Did they come into that game last night to send a message? No, they came into the game last night because they played with a little bit of desperation, having lost the, the previous two games on the road. Uh, you know, they, they lost to Memphis, lost at Chicago, and having an intent to try to be the best team in the East. And you're playing a team who is holding that, that crown, if you will. You've got to come and play with a high level of intensity, and you've got to come and be forceful with the way you play. I don't think it was anything other than that. LeBron James made some comments yesterday about – uh, the physicality of it that referees effectively, and I'm paraphrasing here, should be paying more attention to some of the shots he's taking. Is that some gamesmanship on LeBron's part, trying to get inside the referee's head before their next meeting? I think LeBron's comment was in general, but I think it, it happened to be after the Pacers game, which yeah. was a very tough game, because I think he may be, and I said this on our, our broadcast on Fox Sports Indiana, the he's hard to officiate because he's such a big, strong guy that he takes hits all the time that officials would call on some people, but they can't call on LeBron because it really doesn't affect what a LeBron is trying to do. Now, whether that is fair or not, you can make an argument, but some would make an argument that you can hardly touch him and he gets a foul too, which is the nature of what people say superstars get. But I think what he's just saying, he said, and I, he referenced Blake Griffin that way. Shaq was that way. Big, strong guys in this league inevitably are very hard to officiate, but I don't think there's anything intentional about the officiating. officiating. I just think it's a hard game to officiate. And it's hard to know when those guys have really gotten fouled because they are able to complete plays that 95, 98% of the other guys, if they get fouled like that, that they can't complete the play. And LeBron is able to do it. Did Bernard King and Truck Robinson have issues with the way you play them? No, I mean, the style of basketball is so very different then than it is now. This is a much faster pace. That was a much more physical pace all the time. There would be no talk about this was a physical game had this been when I played. There's just no question about it. This this was just a game, and, and it wasn't anything other than that. This is closer to a playoff game in this day and age because everybody was so purposeful in what they were trying to do on both sides. He's Quinn Buckner, Fox Sports Indiana, Pacers broadcast. Uh, Roy Hibbert, what's his status right now? Looked like he banged up his uh, – got a concussion last night. Well, he got popped pretty good. I, I don't think they've made any determination as to exactly where he is on that. But he, he got hit, and, and it, he was dazed. He was even dazed after the broadcast, and I, I knew he was going to be dazed. He came out on the floor, oddly not – it wasn't funny, but it, one of those circumstances, after the foul, he headed to the locker room and was going to get checked out, and I think he bit his tongue and, and his lip. He came back on the floor – and he was going out to shoot a free throw. Nobody was out there. We were still in a TV timeout, and I knew then that he was out of it. And then, so anything after that, I'm not surprised. And even after our broadcast and our interview, one of the people that interviewed him, Brooke Ozendam, who works with us, was interviewing him and asked him a question, and he he lost train of thought in the question and said, "I'm I'm a little fuzzy right now." So he he took a good hit. There's no doubt about it. But I don't think, on the other hand, Chris. I don't think LeBron did that on purpose. I think he hit him in the jaw. But I tell you what, LeBron was about to make a heck of a play, and Le and Roy's chin was there, and the elbow hit him. But I didn't think he did it intentionally. I think he just hit him trying to move the ball to his left, and his right elbow just clocked Roy. Take Miami out of the equation, Quinn. What's the toughest matchup for Indiana in the Eastern Conference? Well, I think the two things. I, I think you got to be careful about that. But I think Chicago's going to be a really formidable uh, opponent. I think Brooklyn has gotten better. I think they they'll be good, but I don't think you can overlook you know the typical don't look anybody. But I think those two teams are going to be tough for either uh, the Pacers or Miami to play because Chicago plays at a high level of intensity and they do it all the time. They play playoff basketball all the time. Brooklyn has gotten healthy, and when they're healthy and get everybody on the floor, they got to get KG back to be effective in the playoffs. Both of those teams are going to be pretty good. The is, other teams are working their way into the lineup, and they, you got to play against them. Charlotte is not a team you can sleep on either, by the way. 
Is there a team? Is there a player out there that Indiana just struggles to match up with? <laughs> well, the Pacers have struggled to match up with a number of guys. LeBron is is probably you know he's everybody's hard cover. I don't Besides know Miami, yeah. Uh, Jefferson is, is a tough cover for Indiana. Atlanta, when Al Horford is, is healthy, is a tough cover for Indiana. But there there are some other guys out there that are tough covers. But those guys are the ones that pop to my mind. Lance Stevenson had some issues, uh, you know, some some comments from Roy, Roy Hibbert and others publicly saying or wondering uh, about the shot selection of Lance. Is Lance still in the good graces in the locker room these days? Yeah, he is. Lance is the guy that's just, he's really trying to find himself. And he's also happened to be in a contract year, so he's he's concerned about that, though he doesn't want to be concerned. That just the nature of, of pro sports when you're looking to try to establish who you are in the business. And I think... For a point there, there was some concern about him and whether or not he was taking the right kind of shots. I think the lonely, and, and I've watched him from the point, I wasn't sure he was going to ever be able to be a part of, of this team to where he is now. I think he's had tremendous growth, and I think that's why Larry Bird is so patient with him because he sees the young man is a good guy that's trying to learn, and he, he makes mistakes. He's a young kid. He and Paul are the same age, so they're both young, and they make mistakes because they're young, but they don't make them intentionally. They make them just because they don't know. Did he deserve to get kicked out of the game last night? Absolutely. You don't do that. I think that's you embarrass yourself, the organization, and everything else. Now, having said that, he also had gotten his second technical foul. This is one of the things that I, I and I missed it last night. I, I have to say this. They had called a technical, apparently, when Lance and, and Dwayne Wade got into it a little bit, trying to, Wade was protecting, I think, Chalmers. Well, apparently they call a technical vet. But then after that, when he did the, the next stunt, so he gets his second technical and he's out. But at, but at no point do I think you you do what Lance did to Dwayne Wade, which is you go back and you taunt and taunt with that kind of energy because you do you're gonna you you run the risk of creating a fight. So I think the officials were trying to manage the game and making sure Lance didn't get in anything yeah. else. The other thing that happened, quite frankly, Chris, was Lance and, and LeBron in the first half, not in the second half, early in the second half, had gotten into it. LeBron got a foul called against him with chest bumping and all of that. And then the officials got together, and I saw them get together, and they recognized that Lance had initiated all of that action. So you do that, and yeah. that culmination is what gets you in trouble. Good to talk to you, Quinn. Thank you. It's Quinn Buckner, Fox Sports Indiana Pacers analyst.